an opportunity to give you information about our consumption and activities. And uh, my agenda for uh, the introduction before my colleagues, uh, objective, strategy, organization and governance of our consumption, and partnership with Apple. We have started uh, our consortium in 2002 with a project of digital uh, portal uh, services for students and staff in the new universities. And many universities have, have adopted the solution we have proposed with your portal and CAS. And we have uh, started with a new organization six years ago, which is a non-profit structure with this one project. And actually, we have 70 members in our consortium in France. It's the most important open source consortium in France and with collaboration with the Apeleo Foundation. Uh, for the activities, we have uh, 20 conventions with uh, members of the consortium uh, to, to do the participation uh, in the consortium for many activities as we will propose you to this morning. Our objective is to facilitate learning and campus life for students, but also the daily work of the staff members using IT on the campus, and to pull development of digital services to divide costs between universities, to share technological development and new services, and conceive and plan for the development of the portals, evolution of the portal, collaborative tools, and mobile services. On this slide, we can identify the different interest points of our consortium. Uh, we have, of, of course, the portal of services, but also the connection to e-learning platform, uh, collaborative space, enterprise content management, digital desktop, and uh, connection, services connection uh, to the information system of the universities. Our strategy, we have chosen to, to use open source solution to enable constant information and tools and uh, services. Each establishment can adapt the technological goodwill to fit its own strategy and needs. It's one of the key of the success of uh, your consortium. Collaborate with our, the organization in France, but also in, in the international organizations such as Apaleo, whose solutions are the basis of the, the sub projects and assure the perpetuity, adaptability, and technological development. We have many information to the students, so for us it's very important to, to have uh, access with profile, uh, users profile, and to integrate uh, e-learning uh, platform, uh, pro provide pedagogical services and uh, services for uh, the library, to have only one access point to, to the services. And the consortium is also to encourage team brain work and sharing experience and feedback and support on the standards. For your organization and governance, we have a strategic board with nine people from nine institutions, a technical coordination team with 14 people, and after we have, for the different activities, we have a nine working group, multiplication, digital desktop, group management, with a grouper, OAE, a portal with your portal, statistics, mobility, with your mobile, uh, with enterprise content management, with a solution in CEO, which is the first source solution in France, and uh, development for the choice of the framework to develop. And the working group uh, is based with uh, the member of the universities. For the organization of the activities, we is a coordination uh, team. We have uh, four meetings a year. Uh, we have uh, an annual seminar for global uh, coordination to, uh, to, to share some information between the working group and to define our strategy and our priorities of development. One point uh, very important is the support of the Ministry of Higher Education in France. The Ministry has a different uh, program uh, and the support is uh, associated to the, uh, some program of IT. As I say, we have uh, nine working group, and we propose for the development uh, a framework, uh, a sub to, to share the, the development. 
we have many contributions of uh, universities and engineer school, and we, for that we use uh, GitHub, and we encourage debate with the community with uh, mailing lists and uh, wiki. And we organize uh, two conferences a year in Paris uh, with more than uh, 100 participants each time. The last one was in February with Aperio Europe. And the next one we will be organized in the beginning of July. And all the sessions are recorded and access, uh, available on the website of the course of service. What is your partnership with uh, Aperio Foundation? It's, uh, an important point for our organization. In October uh, last year, we, uh, two years ago, we, we decided to have a memorandum of uh, understanding to develop our collaboration. And uh, last year, in September, we have signed a convention between the Support Tile and Apreo Foundation to, uh, for the development of our consortium to the Hawaii project. We had organized different meetings between uh, uh, OIA team and uh, support uh, consortium and the ministry to define the term of the convention. Uh, as you say on this slide, is to, to participate to, to the strategy of the project, to contribute in funding uh, for the solution, and to, to participate to the development of widgets. But I will speak about this point. And to, to maintain the translation of OIA for the French. Uh, community, is also Frédéric, uh, who supports this activity. And we have organized uh, a joint conference in the beginning of this year in Paris uh, with uh, Apero Up and Bus uh, Day in two days. Uh, it was a good success, uh, as uh, Jan Dauphin has said in uh, the beginning of this week. Uh, because we have also the translation for the French community and it was also an opportunity for our community to have new topics in the agenda of the conference, uh, Apple Europe, like uh, learning analytics or ePortfolio. We are very satisfied by this organization uh, in two days in France. And in, <coughs> during this uh, conference we have assigned a, a, renew, a new convention we, with the Apollo Foundation for a project, and we want to develop the collaboration between our consortium and the Apollo Foundation. Uh, also, to, to participate in the strategic decision uh, at different activity working group for U Portal, U Mobile, for example, uh, and to participate in a project, and also to assist Apollo in the implementation in Europe. Uh, by uh, the organization of events, um, for example, uh, in Paris this year. Hi, my name is Frédéric Dorman. I am the coordinator of ACIP or OAI Working Group. There are the four parts that I would develop in my presentation. First of all, I will deal with the history of OAI implementation in France, followed by the strategy we decided to follow. Then I will focus on the specificities of the French model and finally the first assessment. In February 2012, we started translating in the second resolution in France since we already believed that, uh, in the project even back then. In the month of June of the same year, the AC Consortium decided to create a working group dedicated to the OA solution. The working group has several objectives, maintaining the French version, organizing thematic conferences, defining a strategy for implementation in our community, and developing widgets. The first action in January 2013 was to install a shared server. The server meets two objectives, having a demo server for the ASU community so that members can work together and exploring some of the possibilities of OA and checking the quality of the French translation. Since that's that, we maintain the French translation to 100%. In September 2014, 
A convention was signed between uh, Apero and USIP with the following objectives. Encouraging involvement of the French higher education community in the YRA project, launching the pilot activity in France, and participating in the internationalization efforts. Last January, we went uh, to the University of uh, Cambridge for a workshop <laughs> with the OIA project team. This allowed us to better understand both the operating and the development dimension. I wish on behalf of the entire EZIP OIA team to once again thank the speakers for the credit of those training sessions. This workshop gave as a major bus in the right direction. Last April, we launched an OIA uh, instance with the uh, SU Port uh, Consortium. As the first element, this instance was several objectives, providing a demo server for the SU community so that members can work together and explore some of the possibilities of OIA, and also collect and identify the main use cases for our French users. You may be wondering why not use the official OA instance managed by the APR Foundation. Well, as you may already know, French University has a special mentality which prevents for using third party services. This explains why most, if not all, of our digital services are hosted internally. And, when, and uh, why some services, such as uh, Google Apps, are strongly not recommended. This corresponds to the regulatory framework in the world of education. Anyway, we have to take account that mentality. As of today, our challenge is to somewhat change this mentality for the university to use an OA, OA instance managed by the ASI Consortium. In your strategy, we have two main phases. The first one consists in opening tenants for the university involved in the projects, which are University Pierre et Marie Curie, University de Lorraine, University de La Rochelle, and uh, University de, du Littoral Côte d'Apal, and the uh, University of Valenciennes and the Congress. In the second phase, we will create new tenants for the university interested in the project, but with, we still have to define the specific modalities of this operation. Needless to say that uh, only ASUP members will be considered as potential participants. Currently, the, the whole infrastructure is hosted by the Lorraine University. It consists of one web server and its free application and free view servers, one uh, NFS server for storage, three database servers, two Elasticsearch servers, two servers to create Etherpad collaborative documents, and one Redis server for catching one uh, Rabbit M2 server and one server dedicated to the monitoring. In our time, it's composed of two engineers for University Pierre et Marie Curie, one engineer for uh, Valenciennes, uh, two engineers for University de Lorraine, two engineers for uh, University du Littoral and one engineer from the University of La Rochelle. But we don't know work, work full time on this project. It is extra work for us. And I would like to thank the entire uh, ASUP team for the uh, implications in the project. We have already opened a tenant for the ASUP, and the ULCO tenant will open in June. Next September, we will most likely create tenants for Valenciennes, La Rochelle, and Lorraine.
we have created a teaser video and, the, and a tutorial video in order to spike the interest of our university and make them realize the benefits of adopting the OI solution. This video were carried out in a neutral environment tech. It's possible for university to wear it there. I stopped the video. At the development side, we have created a widget, um, a widget which goal is to enable the use of a PIWIC tracker. For those who don't know what PIWIC is, it is a open, the open source equivalent of Google Analytics. As already discussed, I'm just the OI project team. We will now work on developing a notification widget. So I will now turn the flow of automatic. Okay, okay so um, I'll be covering quite a few topics today, so I put all the big title for my part of the presentation. <clears throat> so first of all, um, I'll talk about new portal and portal in general in France. So this chart represents the proportion of uh, portal solutions currently open in France. And to be honest, we don't really keep track of who's doing what, so this is just based on my uh, research, which consisted in digging over 50 portals and trying to figure out the uh, solution and version being used. So as you can see, more than half of universities are using U portal 3, and uh, about the uh, U portal 4 and represents 15% uh, of the default portals. Uh, I guess this number will soon increase because we know for a fact that several universities have decided to switch to um, this new version of next fall. <clears throat> so last year in San Diego, we talked about uh, the, the SIP package. So uh, we're going to do that today, but um, just know that it was released on, um, was based on the version 411 of the model, and uh, it was released in March of last year. And uh, honestly, I think it is why one of the reasons why the universities haven't upgraded the platform because it came out a bit too late in the year, so uh, most universities wouldn't have the time to uh, switch their platform before the uh, start of the academic year. So anyway, uh, to help them with their upgrade process, we organized a workshop with uh, two objectives in mind. The first one was to uh, provide an introduction to give to uh, our members because most of them uh, had not had the opportunity to work with it and it had before this project, so it was important for us to give them some background on this, uh, this technology and tools. And the other thing was to talk about the plugin itself. 
So we gave them an overview of the package, tried to share some tips and recommendations about the uh, deployment and duration of polls. And uh, we also tried to give them some answers about how to create your own skin, how to um, uh, efficiently use uh, it to deploy, upload, and um, update your portal and portlets. And, um, and, uh, and, and then what's uh, yeah, the thing we talked about was to uh, better implement high frames in our portals. So overall, between these two sessions, more than 40 um, institutions were represented. So it's more, uh, it's more than half of universities um, from the uh, concession. So over the year, we developed quite a few projects. So I'll show you some of them, starting with the Sutuza, which is a lightweight project um, used to display the trees of the specific user. So the Twitter user may be set up by the portal um, administrators when publishing the project, or by the portal user in the configuration mode. The Desktop Cloud Manager um, project uh, let the user have access to their own directories, and um, depending on the right, they can upload, download, and rename different folders and files. <coughs> This one is a simple part of it. It's, so it's, all, it's only to show the um, mail list uh, a user has subscribed to or is the owner of the reader of. Um, this is a second version of the Sukana, which makes it possible for a user to search through an directory. And um, it has a geolocation feature, so you can get direction to the office of the person or the other service you're looking for. The following two products uh, work with Nuxeo. Um, this one is used to upload and search through uh, workspaces, taking into account the, um, the rights of the user, of course. <coughs> and the second one is used to display the user's dashboard uh, and list of all of their files. <coughs> this one lets the user manage and launch. Um, the proposal session directly from the pocket of the user. They also invite uh, people through the email. <coughs> and um, this one displays the list of files a, a user has applied to their uh, Fidex account. So uh, you can see all the files and also the disk usage. And uh, as of today, it's only working with the Fidex uh, configured with the Shibboleth authentication. Well, for those who don't know, PaperCut is a um, management system, so this project was created to give an overview of the user's account, so they can easily know um, how much credit they have left and how many pages they have printed so far. Um, the user may also um, add credit uh, through Playbox, and as you can see on your right, it's also all the previous um, payments the user has made. <coughs> Oh, to put it simply, this one is like the, is an enhanced version of the dining project that um, Jesse developed years back. So it's used to display information about um, dining halls and the food being served in each one of them. It has a geolocation feature, so you can easily spot the nearest location depending on where you are. And uh, it also know the user's preferences, so you can, um, so the user may, may mark the restaurant as a favorite or Two of our main um, puppets are currently under refactoring. So this one is like a little CMS used to create and publish news in universities. So an authorized user um, may create a news, um, add attachment to it, uh, set up public publication and expiration date, um, make it public or private to a specific group of users, and uh, use our um, dispatch categories. And, uh, RS, and uh, RSS feed is uh, produced for each one of those categories. So I didn't have a, a, a screenshot of the newest version, so just put up another one. But it will be released uh, soon, I guess. <coughs> and the last one is a scripter, which is a um, XML aggregator used to uh, display uh, news from RSS feeds. And, uh, it handles and and uh, the user's preferences, so a uh, user may mark an item as red or in red, or a user may subscribe to some service uh, sources. <coughs> so 
well, most of our code uh, is or should be on our PW repository, so feel free to check them out if you want. There may be also some other portlets available, but they're most likely uh, based on French University of French solutions, so I don't think it would be really interesting for you to check them out. Take a look if you want, and uh, there's also some documentation that it's mostly in French on our wiki, so sorry. Okay, so um, we keep developing portlets, and uh, we would also like to uh, improve uh, the uh, user interfaces of uh, some existing ones. So we thought it'd be great to make them responsive. So we, we thought that the best way to do that was to use Bootstrap. So that's what we did. But the thing is, uh, we found out that it was not as easy as as we first thought because. Bootstrap uses media queries, which means that uh, the resulting layout depends on the width of the window. So let's take an example. We have a, a 1,600 pixel wide window. Bootstrap will consider and write for itself that you are in the large context. Um, but the thing is, uh, eventually, a profit which takes only a third of these bits will also be uh, displayed at different large context. So it's not really what we wanted. What we would have liked to get is something like that, as if we had several contexts in one single page. So, how to do that? Well, uh, there's no such thing as um, element query in uh, the CSS3 specification, so we came up with a solution on our own, which consists in removing um, all media queries from the bootstrap, so we are not relying on the uh, width of the of the window, but to work on the portlet level. So in the end, what needs to be media queries are now um, translated into several classes. And uh, so once you have imported this class version of Bootstrap, all you have to do is to um, add a JavaScript snippet to, um, to set and update um, the CSS classes. Uh, according to the, the width of the profit continuum. And everything else provided by Bootstrap, like the read, the components, etc., will remain untouched. So when coming the uh, web pages, it will be completely transparent for the uh, developers. So what have we done so far? Um, <clears throat> well, first, we generated a custom version of Bootstrap with no media tools whatsoever. We uh, automated this task uh, with Grunt for uh, future releases of Bootstrap. We tried out our solution uh, in new profits, but also in the existing one, which is the uh, new screener profits. And we talked about this in the mailing list, but um, I think that most of the effort daily has been focused on the UPOL 4.1, so we didn't have uh, many feedbacks, but we hope that we change soon because we have some remaining issues. Um, first of all, um, the um, JavaScript is not called when you're moving around your profit and customizing the portal. So it means that the CSS classes are not updated and uh, it will most likely cause some layout issues when you're moving a, a profit from a large button to a small one, for example. And the other problem lies in having two different versions of Bootstrap, one using the uh, media queries, so, which is the version uh, imported by Uporo, and our custom version. Uh, so having this two versions, as you can see, will end up uh, creating conflicts. Um, another project we are currently working on is the view mobile or the other version of it. So our goal is to improve the uh, existing solution to make it more available for universities. So how to do that? Well, first by fixing some remaining bugs that we came upon, but more importantly by implementing push notification, because we thought that it would be a, more, a lot more adopted if some native feature were added to it. So, and we also tried to make some native code if we have some time. We will be reading at the end of the year. Um, Okay, so um, in the last few weeks, we've, uh, we've tried to look into uh, implementing um, push notification using the uh, unified push server and its uh, specific callback push plugin developed by uh, Aerodia. 
And to sum up, the idea is to have one main server on which you will register um, your mobile applications. And uh, for, one of, for each one of those applications, you will uh, um, specify several variants, one for iOS, one for Android, etc. And um, then you have to use the, um, the library provided by IOGIA to make the user's devices register on this um, main server. And uh, on your backend server, uh, you, you only have to use the sender API to ask for this notification to be sent. And, uh, well, the main server will uh, handle everything else for you and uh, send all this notification to the uh, user's registered for us this application, whatever the platform. So in the end, our goal is to use this mechanism and uh, try to create a project to uh, send this notification. And the last project I'll focus on in um, consists in enhancing the authentication process for our mobile users because we can keep asking them to type in their login and password in a few hours. So first thing first we needed to extend the uh, length of the SSL uh, session so it would last days or weeks or even months. So that was quite easy because we all we had to do was to activate the remember me feature. But the our um, information security officer was not really keen on this idea. So what happens if the um, device get lost or uh, stolen? So the best way to deal with this, in our opinion, was to implement a ticket revocation. So um, the idea is to um, is to have a, a user interface in which a user can uh, easily revoke a token. Um, whatever they want and we get up into the uh, to have the actual device in hand. So we are currently working on a cast add-on to, uh, to do that and uh, consisting storing additional data like the uh, IP address, the user address, and, uh, and that's what we got so far. Um, as you can see on this screenshot, we list all the, all the tickets of a specific user. And uh, for each one of these tickets, you get the uh, creation time. The last time it's been used, uh, the user agent, and it also tries to um, um, calculate the location of the user um, based on the uh, IP address. Well, you do that if you're in a private network, but it should be, it should be working. And you can also, of course, revoke the tickets. So I won't go through all of that because we will see. We talked about politics. So the idea is to develop new projects and try to finalize our work on authentication and the new mobile projects, develop new new widgets for IE and uh, extend the um, the SAP instance to other institutions. And we also then are packaging the new the new version of the um, new portal and uh, there's also some cool stuff coming up like the uh, like the marketplace which is a way to uh, promote all the developments um, being done by our community. There's also some um, projects in our computer, and we hope to soon release the new version of the uh, AGMS, which is a project uh, consisting in uh, collecting all statistics from various um, tools like Moodle, um, Portal, like I want to like that, and together them on a local, uh, regional, and national uh, level. So, do you have any questions whatsoever? Or not? Well, thank you for that. Uh, uh, <coughs> we need to talk a little bit more about the reaction that you've got from French institutions around OAE. In terms of things that you're seeing as compelling use cases and uh, what they might see in the future of the Well, the idea is to, for now, we just have the uh, SOP tenants. So um, the users are most, are most likely uh, members who are working in the uh, working groups. So there's not a lot of 
users right now, but the idea is to uh, extend this to other institutions, like Frederick said, and uh, so we hope to identify some specific use case. I think the one of the um, objectives we have is to maybe open it for uh, research into enable um, projects in general universities. We have several group in a national group um, in France, and we propose to this group uh, to open uh, accounts uh, on uh, the common uh, OIE uh, platform, uh, so they can discover uh, the solution and uh, can be diffused uh, in the different region in France the possibilities of uh, OIE. For example, for the identity card of uh, for the students, we have uh, a national group, and they are uh, creating, creating uh, the group on a way to exchange, to share information between uh, the different director in the region. The objective is to to demonstrate, but in, in a real case, uh, in the community. Uh, this is a little bit of a specific question because I honestly thought you know, I'm aware of some of the work I'm doing. So the data center, I forgot the institution where OAE is being hosted, I forgot the name, but is that um, part of this cloud um, project that, that was going on in France from the US there? Uh, at this time, we, we have uh, several projects of uh, cloud computing, national cloud computing. But it's not defined, uh, so we we have a collaboration with a un one university, uh, University of Lorraine, uh, who has uh, accepted to to host the platform. The last session. <laughs> and the last question. Thanks for coming up. Thank you for your attention.